race four, but today I thought I would run you through my 1968 Mini Cooper S. This thing is 49 years old and has bags of character that exceed its diminutive size. I love this little car, it's perfect for country roads. You know, it's tiny, you're bobbing along, you're having fun, and you're not going to grip. You've got to think about what you're doing to get the best shifts in. You've got to get a nice smooth heel and toe. You've got the great four-speed box. Everything's a little bit slower. You know, the way you shift, you've got to take your time. It can't be rushed like a modern car. And that, again, just all adds to the experience. You have to actually drive it and concentrate on what you're doing. It is fantastic. What a fun little thing. What I love about these older cars as well is they're all an experience to be in. Uh, it feels <laughs> like you're stepping back in time. I mean, look at the steering wheel. It is huge. The steering wheel is actually bigger than the wheels on the car itself. It's got that sort of Baker-like feel to it. The beautiful original Austin badge. It's got all the old stars in the middle in that classic mini style. Loads of patina. And it's just such a cool place to be. What's also amazing when you consider modern cars is how small it is. Modern cars these days are massive by comparison. I mean, my knees are almost around my ears. My feet are all concertinaed up. I'm trying to work the tiny, tiny little pedals. It is just hilarious to be. I can actually put my hand flat on the window, the other side of the car, and I'm barely leaning over. Crazy. John Cooper really got onto something, you know, these little cars were very, very successful in competition. Paddy Hopker that used to smash the rallying in these things. And it's amazing that such a little car could have such good domination. It used to dominate the Monte Carlo rally. Just hilarious. So there are three variants of the uh, Mini Cooper S. Uh, there was the Mark 1, 2 and 3. Uh, they actually built around 19,000 Mark 1 Mini Cooper S's around 6,000 Mark IIs and around 1,600 Mark III's. So it's quite unusual. Actually, production slowed down as it went through the model and they continued building them until 1971. So this makes it quite a rare car. At the moment, the really valuable Mini Cooper's are the Mark I's and that's because they can be used for racing in the 366 classes, the 366 touring cars, but the Masters. And then, so for the FIA spec cars, they're all Mark I's. And that makes them pricey. I mean, a, a good Mark I race car is going to cost you between 70 and 100,000 pounds, which is a crazy sum of money when you consider what these little cars were sort of 15 years ago. So, how did I end up with this little 68 Mini Cooper S? Well, I went to the Kings Lynn Classic Car Auction. And this little Mini was the last one of the day, the last lot of the day, and I thought it was worth a pun. I've got a friend who's really into minis, so we walked around the car, he gave us some tips and pointers on what to look for. We looked at uh, all the little details in the engine bay, uh, looked for the right stamps, looked for the right plaques, all those sorts of things. And the car basically added up, it looked like a really good buy. Anyway, I won the car. Uh, I didn't get it for a bargain, but I, I didn't pay bad money for it. I was quite happy with the outcome. I managed to drive it home, just. Thing broke down on me a few times on the way home but at the time we knew that bodywork wise it was going to need a little bit of love the panels were all different colors none of the reds matched but mechanically and everything it looked good so i thought yeah this is great this will be perfect so i took it to rjm body repairs in stone market and rob in there was really keen to work on it he's mini crazy and he knows all about these things anyway about nine months later i got the car back 30 minutes from picking it up i broke down and we found out that the engine had had it. It needed a full rebuild uh, and it wasn't looking good. Fortunately for me, my really good friend Chris Hamilton of Crafted Classics Tuning here in Suffolk was available to come around and have a look. And he said to me, you know, basically we need, we need to start again with this. So he took the car, uh, got the engine out and began what was gonna be a full rebuild. Now at the time, for all the documentation, we had on the car uh, from the auction and everything else. It looked like it was all original. I thought it was a numbers matching engine and gearbox and it all looked great. And as it happened, it turns out it wasn't the original engine of block. So at that point I thought, well, do we 
try and find an original engine for it, or do we just go for it? Well, Chris is into building race engines, so we decided to go for it. So it's now running a 1380, really nice racy cam from Swift Tune. It's got lots of real goodies on it, and it makes it quite a nippy little car. I think it's running about 90 horsepower, so in a car this size, it makes it quite quick. Uh, it's good fun. Obviously, it's not fast by modern car standards, but then it's running on little skinny original tyres, which means it moves around loads, you get loads of feeling from the road, loads of feeling from the car, and it makes it just such a fun driving experience, and that's what I love about it. So, after a lot of time and effort, full bodywork and restoration, full engine rebuild, we finally get to the car we are at today. Now, when I got the car in the auction, it also had roof rack, it had a tow bar, uh, it had loads of stuff on it that was just ridiculous. But fortunately it had a heritage certificate and stuff so we were able to, to put it back to its original spec. We knew the car was this red with the black roof and uh, it just looked great and I love getting cars that are like this back to their original state. With all my older cars, with the exception of the crazy orange 2002 hot rod, they're all as original as possible. I really enjoy spending the time trying to find original parts and get them back on the car and get them back to that original state. This had uh, mini light alloy wheels, so now it's back on the little steels. The roof rack is gone, the tow bar is gone, all those things. It's sort of as close as we can get to how it would have been when it rolled off the production line and into the show for the first time. And let's see how it can go. I put my foot down. You know, it's actually quite nifty. Sort of really, it does start to go. It's a lot of fun. I have to fold my knees up to get a good heel and toe in and send it in, feel it moving 